Hello everyone, my name is Stein and I'm part of the NSX Technical Product Management team. And in this session, I'll cover NSX Plus NDR. So NDR stands for Network Detection and Response. That's the third surface that we're covering today. If you've been following the other sessions, we covered policy, we covered NSX intelligence, and I'll really be focusing on threat with NSX Plus NDR. If you look at attacks um, today, attacks tend to be pretty complex and they often involve more than one workload. They may involve more than one cloud, multiple tactics and techniques. Here's a quick example of a realistic attack. We see an attack or a network monitoring station that's being attacked in an on-prem data center. From there, we see lateral movement. An attacker is pivoting the attack to another workload, a Linux workload that is running in a different private cloud environment. They're escalating their privileges. And then from there, we see um, a Windows workstation is being targeted. And finally, we see a command and control connection is being established. So this is all pretty complex. And similar to what Ray mentioned in the previous session on NSX intelligence, Visibility across all of these environments, across all of these clouds, is really crucial for security teams to be able to quickly determine what is going on, how do I scope it, and what should be the priority of what's happening in my environment. And that's exactly what we do with, with, what we do with NSX plus NDR. We essentially take atomic signals, individual signals that may come from an IDS and IPS, like our distributed IDPS or the gateway IDPS, signals that may come from network traffic analysis, NTA, which Ray mentioned earlier in the NSX intelligence session as well. NTA is all about detecting anomalies. We essentially create a baseline of normal network activity for every workload. And then we use unsupervised and supervised machine learning in order to identify deviations from normal, deviations from the baseline, and identify which of these deviations are actually securely relevant. That's NTA. And we also, with NDR, take in signals from malware. Uh, so, you know, files, malicious files that are being transferred across the network. You identify, identify these files are being benign, as being suspicious or being malicious. And we can correlate these file events with IDPS events and NTA events. So that's the main premise of NSX uh, plus NDR. Now, what are we delivering? So Pooja mentioned in the intro session today that we announce NSX plus today. The NDR capability is available for trials. And what this allows customers to do is really simplify stock monitoring by providing the analyst with prioritized and correlated campaigns. So an analyst, instead of looking, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning, you look at all your security events that came in, perhaps 1,000 events from an IDPS. How do you really prioritize that? So with NDR, we correlate these events together and we prioritize them and present them to the SOC analyst. SIM tools are often used in, uh, by security teams to correlate and to ingest events from different security controls from different vendors. We now with NSX Plus NDR have the ability to export not just our atomic events, but also the campaign events to these SIM solutions. Um, you know, this helps reduce the, over, the overload that security teams have and you know, number of false positives, the uh, amount of alerts, it's often a challenge for security teams to, uh, to really focus on the things that matter. So we provide simplified triage, threat triage, scoping, and threat hunting. And everything that we do with NSX Plus NDR is aligned with a MITRE attack framework. So at the initial release, what is available today is the correlation of IDPS events from our distributed and our gateway IDPS. In a future release, we will be adding anomaly events from NTA, and we'll, add, we'll be adding malware events into that campaign correlation framework as well. Um, what's also available today, like all the other NSX Plus capability, is all of this for on-prem data centers. VMC is coming in an extra lease. And then beyond that, we're also adding public cloud sensors. This is going to be more a traditional sensor that you can deploy in a VPC. They'll also allow customers to deploy that on-prem. And that's to provide the same capabilities for non-NSX workloads at your perimeter or in uh, public cloud. Now, why are we doing all of this? Let's focus a little bit more on threat. Let's focus what our customers, what organization, organizations are seeing in the real world. And this, this comes from the VMware Threat Intelligence Report, as well as from Contexa, our threat intelligence team. A couple of statistics that really stood out to me that are really interesting. The number of organizations that were surveyed that experienced zero-day attacks is about 62%. The most important statistic, though, to me is the one at the right bottom. The number of attacks that involved lateral movement, so pivoting an attack beyond the initial attack target into a more valuable resource that may reside on the internal network. 
44%, so almost half of attacks, involve some form of lateral movement. So this again illustrates the importance for east-to-west visibility within the internal network, and it also illustrates the importance of network segmentation within the internal network, so you can scope the attack surface, so you can reduce the blast radius. A few more interesting things. Um, talking about lateral movement specific, specifically, how do attackers move within a network? You know, if you're an attacker, you gain initial access perhaps to a VDI desktop. Now you really want to get to the database server where the interesting data is. How do you do that? Well, you know, maybe that database server is vulnerable to log4j. So you could try to exploit that. The problem with exploits from an attacker's perspective is they tend to be noisy. There's a higher chance of getting detected. So instead, what attackers do is they use allowed channels. They use common protocols like RDP or SMB to pivot the attack, or they use stolen passwords, stolen credentials, or hashes in order to propagate an attack. So pretty interesting. What we've also seen with ransomware is double extortion campaigns. So ransomware is not only about encrypting your files and demanding a ransom payout for that, but malicious actors also try to exfiltrate critical data out of the environment, and it enhances their reason to demand ransom payout. So about 25% of ransomware campaigns involve double exfiltration. All right, what are some other challenges that security teams are seeing? Um, Ray talked about this earlier in the NSX intelligence session, but lack of visibility, especially across clouds, is a huge challenge for security teams. It's really hard to understand what should be the appropriate security posture, what are the workloads deployed anywhere in my organization, and what is the security, what are the security incidents affecting all of these workloads. Too many alerts or not enough alerts, so false negatives is a challenge as well. So, you know, if you're overwhelmed with alerts, it becomes really hard to focus on the things that truly matter. And I'll show that in, in a demo as well. Lack of communication. This goes more to policy building. Imagine your task as a security team to come up with a micro-segmentation policy of a critical application that's been developed by your development team. How do you come up with the appropriate policy? Well, you may have to talk to the application owner, but often security teams, networking teams, and application teams really talk a different language. It takes a lot of time to figure out what is the appropriate policy. And there, of course, the micro-segmentation recommendations that Ray showed in the NSX Intelligence uh, presentation earlier today that's really one of the key ways that we address that lack of communication between teams. Lack of context is a challenge as well. A lot of your security events today are gonna to be based on network constructs. You see IP addresses communicating on ports, but that doesn't really tell you much about what is the workload, what is the asset that is actually being targeted. Is an IDPS signature firing uh, because an attacker is actually targeting a vulnerable database server in production? or a signature is firing because someone in the security team is running a vulnerability scan. Lack of context often delays threat investigation. And all of these leads to, lead to operational inefficiency as well as unmitigated risks. So a brief look at the architecture, and we'll definitely get into a demo at the end of the session as well. But to make it really, really simple, and this is similar to all the other NSX Plus services, you know, all of the enforcement happens on-prem. We have our distributed IDPS, which we've had for a couple of years now. What is really unique about the distributed IDPS is maybe a refresher for you, but it is, it's essentially the same concept of the distributed firewall. What makes the distributed firewall so unique is that it allows customers to front-end every workload with its own layer two to layer seven firewall, and it's essentially a transparent firewall. By means of being, being a transparent firewall means that you don't have to make any network changes to implement any level of segmentation. It doesn't mean if you're just isolating production from development for te or test, or you're creating a controlled communication to your, uh, to your shared services, you're isolating individual applications, or you're implementing a full-fledged micro-segmentation policy within a multi-tier application. With the distributed firewall, you do not make, need to make any network changes because it's transparently applied. The distributed IDPS, same exact principle. This, for the first time, allows customers to front-end every workload with a network-based IDS and IPS. It's not deployed inside the guest VM, it is deployed on the network, but it front ends to every workload in the environment. And that means we don't just have visibility at the perimeter, where someone may be targeting a vulnerable web server, or perhaps there's a client that exploit uh, emanating from a VDI desktop, but we also have complete visibility and the ability to block threats as they propagate within the network, even between two workloads deployed in the same VLAN segment. So that's the key premise of the distributed IDPS. We also have the gateway IDPS, and both of these now with NSX Plus and DR 
can send their detection events to the IDPS event collection service that runs as a SaaS service in our NSX Plus cloud. And then the NSX Plus NDR service that runs in that same cloud is going to do that correlation between these atomic events into campaigns. And it also has the ability to send these events to a SIM service that may be running as SaaS or may be running on-premises. Any questions so far? No? All right, so what are some of the key features that we are releasing today with NSX Plus NDR? Um, I'll be really brief on this slide because I'll cover these in a bit more detail, but number one is a unified event list. So this is taking all of these atomic events and providing a single overview where you see all the different detection events across sites, across projects. The other one is what I talked about, a campaign correlation. This is where we take these atomic events and using correlation logic, we try to figure out which events really belong together and did these events relate or um, result into an actual successful attack. And then we have the SIM integration, so the ability to send atomic events and campaign events to a SIM. So starting, starting with the unified event list, it's maybe a little bit hard to see the slide, but this provides threat triage and investigation by presenting the analyst with an overview of all the different threats that we've detected, regardless of the event type. Initially, IDPS only, but this is going to be anomaly detection events as well, and malware events, and regardless of the site that the event has been detected on. And as I mentioned, you know, all of this is aligned with a MITRE attack framework. I'll go into detail in this in the demo. What we all do also do is event promotion, and this goes way beyond a traditional IDPS that is just based on signatures. In addition to that, we look at behavior. Certain activities, for example, the use of PSExec, may be completely normal for a particular workload or in a particular environment. Other things like failed authentication attempts may be benign. That may just be a user or an application that has been incorrectly configured. In other cases, this activity may be malicious. So what we do with event promotion is we look at the context. If we look at what's happening for a particular workload, have we seen this type of activity before for that workload? And if the answer is no, we've never seen such thing, and now we suddenly see that, that, that means there's a higher chance that this is indeed malicious activity. What we can then do is we can increase the score of that individual atomic event, and we can then choose to correlate it with other events if that's really the case. So that's what we call event promotion. Um, you know, looking at an example here, we see some activity between a um, virtual machine on top to another virtual machine there. This has been flagged as possible Active Directory account enumeration, enumeration by means of an IDPS signature. And you can see on top there, that this has a pretty low impact score. The impact score reflects what is the potential impact of the security incident to the environment. 14 is really low. It's on a score from 0 to 100. However, through NDR, through the NDR promotion logic, we've determined this, that this event is unusual for our environment and unusual for the workload. Based on that, we've promoted the event, we've increased the impact score, and that means that this event will now also be considered for campaign correlation. So going way beyond what a traditional signature-based only IDPS does. Now we see a second phase here, a second event. This one is DCE RPC interaction with task scheduler. So task scheduler, again, one of these common tools that may be completely benign, or it may be an attacker that is living off the land. They're using the tools instead of, instead of bringing in their own tools in order to lower the chance of getting detected. Also, in this case, the initial event when we detected it, pretty low score, 10. You know, this may be completely benign, but then based on context, we were able to increase that score. And now this is considered a malicious event, which can also be correlated into campaigns. And that brings us to campaign correlation. And this is definitely the key feature of what we do with NDR, right? So it's taking all of these individual signals, these atomic events from IPS, malware, and NTA, and correlating them together in a scored and actionable campaign. Uh, that is done based on correlation logic. The correlation rules are quite complex, but I will show an example of one of the more simple correlation rules. So you kind of get to an understanding of how, how does that logic really work? Um, with NSX Plus, these events can be correlated across sites. So we can have an attack that starts in one particular data center and then propagates to another location. We'll visualize that as well. We provide connect the attack chain capability. So this is essentially a visualization of how the attack unfolded from the initial access all the way to exfiltration, if exfiltration happened. And this provides security teams with high fidelity by constantly correlating these signals. So at the beginning, as an attack is happening, the campaign that we've discovered may be pretty simple. Maybe we've seen a drive-by download followed by command and control activity, but then later on, perhaps two or three days later, we see the attacker is now trying to propagate the attack. We see lateral movement and 
perhaps a couple of days later, we see exfiltration. So we constantly attempt to correlate these signals, and it helps us to build these campaigns. Um, so that's the NDR correlation logic, the campaign correlation logic. And with NSX Plus, this is supported across sites. And looking at this example, you see we have our San Francisco and our New York uh, sites, which we've used in the previous demos today as well. And we've detected here a particular incident in the finance project in the San Francisco site. We then have a few other detections across different sites and across different projects. Mm. What our correlation and logic can then do is stitch these all together and unfold <laughs> the whole story of an attack. All right. Oops. Looks like something happened here. So this is <laughs> this is not a good thing. Uh, I think this is the end of the session. Um, yeah, I'm just joking, but obviously, you know, seeing a jigsaw ransomware note, which is what victims of the jigsaw ransomware would see, is not a very pleasant thing. It definitely would ruin my day. But if you're a security analyst, you know, is this really your priority? Well, you know, maybe not. If it's just a single user on a VDI desktop and that user is just me and I'm not the CEO of the company, maybe this is not all that impactful. But if we can correlate that with other things, and we see that the VDI desktop was really just the initial entry point of the attack. But then we saw lateral movement. We saw activity related to the same attack on a database server. Then you know it may it probably will become the priority of every analyst in the environment. And this is kind of a good way of showing one of the correlation rules that we support. This is what we call the command and control wave rule. What this correlation rule does, it looks for the same command and control activity. So command and control associated with the same threat on multiple workloads within the internal network. And what we see at, a, at our starting position here, we see that on my VDI desktop, I've seen drive-by download activity. You know, Someone was exploiting a vulnerability in my browser in order to download a piece of malware. And then we've seen command and control activity related to the same as well. If we then see additional command and control here from our CRM database, and that additional command and control is related to that same threat, the correlation rule allows us to quickly correlate these two and create a campaign out of that. So that's one of these correlation rules. There's a whole bunch more. A lot of them are quite a bit more complex. So I just wanted to give you a quick example of the correlation logic. Now, the third key feature of NSX Plus NDR is the ability to export events to a SIM. So you know, I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of security team, teams use SIM solutions in order to aggregate logs from different security controls. Firewalls deployed at the perimeter, the NSX distributed firewall, um, you know, other, other solutions that customers may have deployed. Um, so being able to export our atomic events is really important. And of course, with NDR, we already do a lot of the correlation by ourselves. And because the NSX plus NDR correlates our own NSX events, the fidelity, the quality of that correlation is really, really high. But on top of that, you know, with uh, NSX Plus NDR now, we can send the atomic events that we've detected, including all of the metadata. So including the mapping to MITRE, including the name and the UUID of the VM, the work that was detected on, including the site ID where the detection happened, not just for atomic events, but also the campaign events can be exported to SIM. There's basically two deployment scenarios that we support today. Number one is a SaaS-based SIM solution like uh, Splunk, for example. So there's native integration. We can send these SIM events directly from the NSX Plus NDR service to a SaaS-based Splunk instance. The other scenario that we support is an on-prem SIM that is not directly accessible from NSX Plus SaaS. And for that, we can essentially use um, uh, VMware Area for, upper, uh, for Logs, um, or uh, Log Insight, as it used to be called, as an intermediate. So this, can, this is a SaaS-based offering of VMware Area for Operations or operations for logs that is deployed in the cloud, we can send the um, events from NDR, from NSX plus NDR to area operations for logs SaaS. And then from there, you can choose to forward these logs to an on-prem SIM solution that customers may have deployed via another component called the proxy that is deployed on-prem. So as you send over those campaign events to the SIM, well, let me, let me ask a more basic question first. As you've designed all that, do you have in mind the fact that as a SOC, I may not want to introduce the NSX Plus interface to my SOC analyst? Yep. I only want them to use that SIM mm -hmm. or you know some sort of um, um, tool like Swimlane or something yep. like that. So 
It sounds like you had that in mind. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so then the main question then becomes, like, how rich is that data from the campaign events? Like, are you, are you sending over the final analysis or are you sending over all the logic that led to that analysis? We're sending over the initial, so a campaign can get upda updated constantly, right? So you have the initial campaign correlation, which could be very simple. We've seen c the same C2 activity on multiple workloads. Later on, we correlate in lateral movement and perhaps exfiltration into the same campaign. Every time the campaign gets updated, we generate a new event and send it to a sim, where we say this was the initial campaign, now that campaign got updated, new event, and this is what caused the new atomic event to get correlated into the campaign. It's based on this correlation logic. Okay. So, you know, we send an event at every time, and we definitely very much had in, in mind that some security teams don't want to log into any other console. Yeah. They want to do everything from their sim. And not only do we now give them the ability to see all of our atomic events, but we help at correlation by providing them those correlated campaign events okay. as well. Awesome. Thank yep. you. Excellent question. All right, so demo time. And this is going to be a live demo, uh, hopefully, if things are working. And we'll look at a simple but realistic attack scenario involving our two sites, San Francisco on the left, New York on the, on the right. The campaign is going to be a bit, more collect, a bit more complex than kind of the stage setting that we're doing. But initially, we'll look at how, um, you know, um, um, how um, we see an initial download here on a VDI desktop in San Francisco. Then we'll see command and control activity associated with that. We'll then see lateral movement from VDI to a production data uh, production server deployed in the DMZ in the New York side. And then from there, we'll see another step of lateral movement to a database server deployed on the internal network. And finally, we'll see exfiltration. Now, when I do this demo, you know, the first question that I get is, isn't NSX supposed to stop this? Well, yes, but you know, if you want to see a compelling demo of a realistic attack scenario, I kind of have to allow these things. So this is kind of the before scenario where you show, we show you the visualization, we show you the, the detection capabilities, but we haven't implemented proper segmentation. We haven't implemented our IPS into a prevention mode for purpose of this demo. All right, so let me switch over to the demo. While you're loading up, what's the window of duration that I can kind of evaluate data over, right? Because that's important yeah. for NDR. Like. Absolutely. So, I mean, we store the data for up to, um, or we can view the data for 90 days. We store the data for one year. The actual window for correlation logic depends on the correlation rule. But typically, it's around seven days. But it kind of depends. There's definitely rules that have a longer look back window. There's rules that are shorter. So it kind of depends on, you know, what is that correlation rule? And how uh, quick in succession do we expect to see similar activity? We've seen a lot of the detection side. We're going to see the response side. Uh, in, in the demo? The demo is really focused on the detection side, and our capabilities today are, fo are focused mostly on, on detection as well. Um, response, of course, keeping in mind with what we do with the distributed firewall. Mm -hmm. What is really unique there is that we can, if you want, immediately take an action using the same product. So, you know, other NDR solutions mm -hmm. that exist are almost all complete visibility. We also have the enforcement capability. We have the distributed firewall. We can immediately implement a, a more controlled micro-segmentation policy in order to black lo block lateral movement that shouldn't be happening, or we can apply virtual patching through the distributed IDPS to patch a vulnerability that we've seen. Um, right now, and this could all be automated, automated through the API, right now on the response side, there is no UI uh, to take a response action. So it's about in, in the starting with um, defense, right? So you want mm -hmm. to implement micro-segmentation, limit the attack surface, limit the blast radius as much as possible. Uh, then we have visibility which we also you know, have at NSX Intelligence, flow visibility, threat detection capabilities. And then certainly as a result of a threat, you can automate things by using the API to take actions. For example, applying a security tag to a workload. As a result of that, the tag being applied, a workload becomes a member of a predefined quarantine group and a quarantine policy gets applied. The intention to add some of that intelligence and workflow response into the UX? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, okay. that's absolutely the plan. So, you know, right now we're starting, uh, having a look at the uh, kind of overview of the NSX Plus instance. We can see that we have two different locations, San Francisco and New York. But let me switch over to the actual NSX Plus NDR view. Um, and this is similar to the other demos that you've seen today. We're looking at the um, NSX Plus, what we call the threat inspection, detection and response uh, page here, view. 
And you can see on the left side, we have campaigns, we have detections, and we have a couple of settings. The settings are very limited. All you really configure in there is the SIM integration. We'll have a look at that later. But in looking at detections, you can see that we've detected, we've correlated one campaign here. This got named the Emotet Agent Command and Control Wave. So this kind of gives you an, already an idea of what was detected. Obviously, Emotet malware, we've seen command and control activity, um, and that was correlated by means of a wave detector. So you've seen that command and control activity on multiple workloads in the environment. You can also see the top threads that we've detected here kind of matches with what I mentioned earlier. A couple of other things, we see Steel C, which is an information stealer that was involved as well. And when we look at the MITRE attack framework, we map all of these atomic events to that framework. And the MITRE attack framework is used ubiquitously by security teams to talk about threat and to talk about security controls and how these secu security controls map to a threat. But here we've seen um, execution, you've seen that we've seen command and control, and really most critical is that we've seen exfiltration. So data was exfiltrated out of the environment. So this obviously is something that would be important. You see an impact score here, an impact score of, score of 95 on a, a scale from zero to 100, obviously really, really high. How do we determine the impact score for a campaign? Well, it's based on things like what is the number of workloads involved? What are the different individual atomic events that form the base for correlation? All of these kind of result in an impact score from being calculated. Just to clarify on that, so if I see a progression that mm -hmm. follows the MITRE kill chain, that the escalation path would be accelerated from just someone like accidentally clicking on a server. And Absolutely, like yeah, yeah. If you just have a single atomic event, or you know, maybe you have that multiple times, but it's just command and control activity, or maybe you know, you run a vulnerability scan and you see this maps to MITRE discovery. Um, or, uh, you know, so that is going to be a single atomic event. It may get correlated into a campaign if you had multiple instances of that, but that's going to be a low severity. If you have broad coverage across MITRE and you got all the way to exfiltration and there's a large bunch of workloads involved, that's going to significantly raise the, the impact score. And the impact score can change, it's dynamic. So, you know, as you add on additional detections to the campaign, the impact score is going to get uh, recalibrated as well. All right, so let me open up this campaign. One other question, uh, is there also, I think you guys have like a threat intelligence center. Is there a feed there? So like if there's day zero attacks that get detected elsewhere that can mm -hmm. fed in and says, hey, like, you're potentially Absolutely. vulnerable for the... Yeah, all of this is fed by um, Contexa, by our threat intelligence cloud. So this includes things like IDPS signature updates, which happen multiple times a day. Um, but this also includes all the intelligence that we have about the specific threats. You know, we keep, when a new threat comes in, the threat intelligence team is going to provide not just a signature, but also an abstract. Like, what is this threat? And if you're a security analyst, how can you determine how, if this threat might be a true positive or a false positive? That's all information that we carry as well, and that we constantly update from the threat intelligence cloud by the Contexa team. So, you know, opening up this campaign, this Empire Agent campaign, you see a couple of things right away. There's a number of detections, you know, 11 detections means 11 atomic events spanning five different threats, five unique different threats that were identified across three workloads on two different sites. And talked already about MITRE, three tactics were detected. What we can do is we can then look at the individual atomic events. This may be a little bit hard to see, hopefully not too bad, but let's start at the bottom here. And you can see this is sorted by time. So, you know, yesterday evening, the first thing that we saw is we saw Emotet related command and control activity on a, actually, let me scroll a little bit further down, on a VDI desktop. That's the first thing that we've observed. Then um, a couple of minutes later, we saw remote task scheduling. And this is essentially an example of what I talked earlier about earlier with event promotion and with these suspicious rules. So, you know, remote task scheduling, not necessarily malicious activity, but it could be based on context. So initially, when I mean, this event got detected by the distributed IDPS, it was a low severity, what we call an informational event. But then we've been able to increase the score, the impact score, because we know based on context, this is not something we usually see affecting this workload. And this, how the, this is how the attacker moved from VDI desktop to the CRM uh, workload. Then we discovered the same emotet activity. We've also discovered uh, Empire Listener, which is a post-exploit toolkit on the same web workload. And then we saw the second step of lateral movement. So here the attacker pivoted the attack from the web server deployed in our DMZ in New York 
to the database server here for the CRM application deployed on that same site. Remember, the attack initially started in the San Francisco location. The final thing that we saw is exfiltration. So data got exfiltrated using the Steel C information stealer um, from the, um, the CRM database workload going to an external IP address. As I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of threat intelligence, so you can click on the detector and it's going to give you the abstract as well as information on how to determine if it's a true or a false positive. Um, there's additional details available for each of the events that you can see as well. The last thing I do want to show quickly before I end the session is the ability to export events to Splunk. So this is natively integrated into NSX Plus NDR. Here you're looking at a, uh, let me zoom in a little bit, but this is an atomic individual event that you're looking at for an IDPS signature that matched. And you can see all of the metadata that we have about the event is carried in the events that we export to the sim as well. So things like what is the site at which we detected the event? What is the name of the workload involved, of both of the workloads involved, if that's the case? Um, you know, what is the IPS signature? How does this map to MITRE? And even a link, a URL link that takes you to this atomic event within the NDR view. So even if a SOC team doesn't want to initially use any other tools than the SIM, if they do want to look at this event in the NDR UI, that can do, they can do that directly from the event in the SIM. That's an individual event. Same for campaign events. So I mentioned, you know, to your question, what happens when a campaign gets updated? Well, we send out a new event. And that's what you can see right here. You see there's a notification that a campaign got, exfilt, uh, got updated by means of the exfiltration rule that now correlated command and control activity that we've seen earlier with exfiltration of data. And, you know, all the different tactics and techniques that were detected are included in this atomic event as well. So, you know, that's the demo. I know that I'm slightly over time. Any questions? Just the, from a notification standpoint, as something climbs up, I'm assuming there's triggers to SNMP, email, Absolutely. Slack, all that stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. 